Hello everyone, Bellringer Cat here. So, guys, it's finally happening. I can't believe this, but it's finally happening. And this time, I think, is the right time. I know it, this time is legit. We are getting hints of Bloodborne 2 directly from From Software and Japan Studio, not from, you know, Amazon, not from weird people from different development studios that are saying, you know, oh, I think Bloodborne 2 is in development. No. This time we have a game by Hidetaka Miyazaki himself and it's filled to the brim with Bloodborne references. <laughs> Some of them are extremely um, apparent, like you just look at them and you are, and you go like, okay, that's Bloodborne. Why is it here in this uh, game where it clearly doesn't belong? Because all this stuff doesn't really um, seem to refer to anything in their racine. Uh, the Racine, I don't know how to pronounce it, but who cares? I'm Italian, I can barely speak English. <laughs> I don't think it's a problem if, you know, I'm, I butcher a um, French word. But, um, sorry, I was like moving the camera, sorry. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that the tiny doll and the sea sage puppet, or whatever you want to call that other thing, they are clearly telling us, guys, public, you know, Bloodborne players, do you remember a story about a doll and a tiny squid? Yes, of course, we remember. Thank you, Miyazaki. And he also says, Elinas, you know that story? That story is unfinished. Which is, I think, the biggest, you know, when people said that Bloodborne shouldn't have a sequel, what they say is it's a complete story. Bloodborne doesn't need a sequel because it is already completed, which is something that I find absolutely stupid. Because it's like saying that, you know, the Cthulhu mythos are over because uh, Cthulhu was awakened and he has left, you know, um, Riley under the sea to come and ravage humanity. That's the point, interesting stuff. That's what people want to see. And sadly, Lovecraft never provided us with such a pleasure. But other authors, people that were extremely interested in that, they did so. So um, the modern Cthulhu mythos, what we know now, most of the time, like most people that know Lovecraft, they know him through and thanks to the RPG games, like, you know, Call of Cthulhu, the tabletops, like Arkham Horror, um, Ismode stuff. They, they made so many Kingsport festivals, so, so many games like that. All, most of those games focus on what happens next, on the actual conflict between the Great Ones and the human humanity. So that's our current perception of the mythos of Lovecraft. And that's what Bloodborne did. Bloodborne immediately, not immediately, let's, let's say halfway through, uh, directly put us as the hunters against the Great Ones. I, I was about to say the old ones, sorry. About the Great Ones. So saying that, you know, Bloodborne is finished now that our character has become a great one himself or herself. And, uh, you know, th that's kind of the canon ending because all the other endings are just, you know, procrastinating. I mean, uh, if you accept German offers, nothing changes. If you um, defeat German and you get um, captured by the moon presence, nothing changes still. And uh, another hunter will probably come after you and he will maybe, you know, kill you just like you killed German and at some point someone is going to ascend and become a great one. So that's, you know, the, uh, not, I, I, I don't want to call it the canon ending, but yeah, that's kind of what it is. At some point Bloodborne will end, the story of Bloodborne 1, will end with a hunter ascending and becoming a great one. So that's, you know, the same ending for everyone. It doesn't matter which one you picked for your own individual character. And that's when something really interesting can happen. Like they do whatever they want with a premise like this. Like you have literally a new baby god that can shape the world, whatever or he or she wants. Even if you can still, you know, consider them as human, a human with thoughts and you know, emotions like we have, which is probably not what they are going for, I'm pretty sure. I mean, the hunter was already pretty emotionless. <laughs> um, so, you know, just this tiny video for saying that I truly, truly believe that this time we are actually getting Bloodborne 2. 
probably a PS5, probably not next year, probably in a couple of years or something like that. But that kind would kind of explain why they kept silent for so long. Um, and also, I think it's a very smart move from, um, you know, money perspective, like uh, launching the PS5 with Bloodborne 2 attached. That's, I think, the only way someone like me would buy a PS PlayStation in general, a console in general, day one. I never, never bought a single console day one. All my consoles from, you know, the PS1, PS2, even the 3DS, which I sold a while ago, but still. All, even this Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, SAP, that, that, all that stuff. I never bought a single console day one because I wasn't usually interested in the games that were provided at launch. But this time, if they actually provide us with Bloodborne 2, a lunch, at lunch, lunch. It's, 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 it seems like I'm saying lunch, you know, like lunch having food. I don't know, my English is terrible. Please ignore me. At lunch, I got it. <sighs> That's going to be amazing. And I'm probably going like to buy the most expensive edition ever with all the collectibles inside. I don't really care how expensive is it going to be. And uh, I don't really care how, um, you know, how bad the game is going to be because it po it's possible you know that the game is not good just like you know who cares i am just really really happy that finally we are getting some informations directly from from software and you know they are still doing it in a very sneaky way they like you know these easter eggs and stuff like that but at the same time this time i really really think it's legit i really really think and hope that we are actually getting Bloodborne 2 soon. And um, I have no interest in Sekiro whatsoever, now even less than before. <laughs> um, I'm probably not going to play Sekiro, at least not immediately. Maybe if I found it on discount, like many months after. But the fact that it doesn't have like a multiplayer is really discouraging for me, which is, you know, a weird reasoning for me to make because usually I do like single player experiences and I much prefer like Bloodborne to play it single player. Uh, but at the same time, um, Sekiro is not a game I am interested in. So the only thing that, you know, can make me a little bit more interested is playing it with friends. Because even if I don't really care, I'm still going to enjoy it, uh, to laugh with my friends and uh, to ambush ourselves and, uh, in PvP and PvE and make a lot of messes and stuff like that. If I have to play it alone, I think it will end like uh, DS2, which is a, a game that I bought and that I will have probably never finished. Uh, if it wasn't for a couple of friends of mine that are really into it and that I uh, they are leading me through the game. So I, I am on my way of, of finishing DS2, but only because of them. Only because of their company and only because of their guidance. Not because I enjoy the game for myself, which is not, it's, uh, it's not the nicest thing to say about the game, but that's the truth. And I'm trying to be honest here. I could play like Bloodborne to, in, to infinity and beyond on my own. Um, but I can get to a game that I'm not really interested in. And I think that that's what will happen for me with uh, Sekiro. So that's why I'm not wasting my money on it. So I hope you guys are having a really nice day. And uh, there are other uh, Easter eggs in the in Deracine other than the two tiny dolls. And if you are interested, we can make like later on perhaps uh, a video about that. There were like some hints that came out originally, even before the Racine was released. Some have to do with uh, <clears throat> the names of the children in the boarding school. And others are like some en environmental details that are kind of cool and interesting. If you are, you know, into Victorian settings stuff, period dramas and stuff like, it, like me. Uh, have a good one. And I hope that, that this new camera works fine. I hope it does. Bye, guys.